Hi everybody, welcome back to the channel. In this video I am going to be carrying out a service of my BMW E65 730D. Uh, oil filter, fuel filter, air filter and also I'm going to drain and replace all the coolant. Thanks for stopping by, let's, uh, let's get the car jacked up and have a look at what we're going to be doing. Okay, so we've uh, got the car jacked up on uh, securely on axle stands. Um, what we're going to do first is um, have a quick look at where the locations are for each of the filters. Air filter, it's not a panel filter on these, it's a big long, big long filter like so. And that lives underneath this cover panel just here. We'll take all the panels off uh, shortly. Oil filter, just inside this cap here. Um, again, we'll uh, we'll get that cap off very shortly. Fuel filter lives on the chassis rail underneath. We'll do the fuel filter last. We'll get the oil change and the air filter change and the coolant flush done. Um, and then we'll do the fuel filter. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get underneath the car. I'm going to crack off the sump plug and drain out the oil. Now, what I've done is I've um, ran the car up, got it up to temperature, makes the oil nice and uh, nice and thin so it'll, it'll flow easier out of the drain plug. So, yeah, get underneath, crack that off. Um, and while that's draining, we can look at the uh, look at the filters. OK, so here we are underneath the car. Now, this panel here is actually missing on mine. As you can see, it would hook in there and it's got a little um, it's like a little tab which you put a um, flat blade screwdriver in, rotate and it will drop out. It's been missing on my car since I've had it. Um, obviously, it's not the it's not a deal breaker, so I haven't really bothered. Now, some plugs just here, 17 mil bolt, get a big, uh, big drain pan and crack her off. Um, it shouldn't be overly tight. If it is, then it's been over-torqued. Um, uh, there we go. It wasn't too tight. It was just putting up a slight fight. Right. Get the tool out of the way. Now this is going to gush. And this will be horrible and black. Being a diesel, it'll be stinking. I like to get the plug all the way out to the end of the threads. And then just hold it there and prepare myself to pull it away. There we go, like that. That'll be uh, that's a fair amount of oil. I think it's about six and a half liters this car holds. So um, it'll take a little while to drain out. While that's doing that, um, I'm going to get up top, start changing the filters. Right then, uh, let's get uh, started on the filters. What I'm going to do first is I'm going to whip the um, top cover panel off. Just held on with uh, five bolts, I believe it is. See, we've got really good access to the oil filter housing and the air filter is underneath this bad boy right then air filter a bit of a pain to get into um there's two panels effectively that we need to remove this one here is the inlet um to the filter from the front of the car um uh, it comes in this uh, air basically comes in this tube through the filter and then into the uh, inlet manifold three bolts hold this cover on and um, we have to remove this because there's one cover holding this cover well sorry one bolt holding this cover behind this part if you get what i'm saying so what i'll do i will remove these three bolts and then show you the bolt that i'm talking about let's get these out and then um it's a case of removing all the bolts on the cover and then we'll have access to the uh, to the air filter a um, bit more, it's a bit more of a pain than um, a standard panel filter would be, um, but unfortunately on these M57 engines, that's the way they designed it. Okay, so there we go. Come up there. All right, put that to one side now. Round here, there's a bolt on the cover just there. That is the reason why we had to remove this cover, so we can get to that bolt, and then it's that one. 
that one. Um, right down here at the back, there's another one. I've got my finger on it right now. It's really hard to see, but you can feel it by touch. And then again, down in this back corner, there is another bolt, which again, you cannot see, but if you put your fingers down the back, you'll be able to feel it. So they all have to come out and then uh, this panel will come off and we can get the air filter out. Right then, let's get this one off first. as captive which is handy just making sure that they all do stay and that I don't drop one somewhere okay let's switch my extension out just slightly smaller one get in there if I know that that's not gonna work that will this one's really awkward to get into because you've got the firewall at the back I may need to get an Allen key, a regular Allen key on that one actually. It's really quite hard to get to. Let's try this one. Yeah, it's really, really, it's a real tight squeeze in here, guys. I won't like. All right, what I'll do, I'll struggle with these two bolts, get them out, and then I'll bring you back in. Okay then, so uh, I've got those two bolts undone. What I found was it was best to use a regular Allen key, and the one in the far corner is quite deep. And I found that my sockets wouldn't reach, or if I put an extension on, it was too long and it hit the firewall. So what I did was I used the Allen key with a spanner on to turn it and that, um, that got it apart. Okay, so yeah, one, two, three, four, five. Five bolts holding this cover on. What we need to do is pop the uh, oil filler cap off and then, there we are. She just pops off just like that. And there is the, uh, there's the two bolts I was talking about. As you can see, they're, uh, they're quite, um, in, the, in the back there where you can't really see them. So you have to, you have to feel to, um, get an idea where they are. Right, let's get this oil, uh, this air filter out. As you can see, she's pretty stinking. Um, that's only been on there a year, but you can see what it does. Um, yeah, it's nice and clean. It's not too bad inside. So the uh, the filter's been doing its job. Okay, um, that's uh, that's for the scrapper. So let's get rid of that. Um, and get the new one. What I'm going to do, I'm going to get a hoover. I'm just going to give the uh, inside of the airbox a quick hoover out and get rid of all this rubbish. And then uh, once I've done that, um, we'll get the uh, we'll get the air filter in. Okay, so uh, that's the inside of the airbox all hoovered out. Got rid of all the old leaves and all the detritus that was in there. Now with the uh, with the air filter, there's this little this little nobble here, and that little nobble sits on this little semicircle just here and there is a corresponding one just inside there right there and that's what retains the uh, filter in position so what i'll do let's pop her in get her in the right place just like so and make sure that that knobble's sitting in the semicircle because obviously if you get it upside down that won't be in the right place and you won't, you'll struggle to get the cover on so make sure that it's the right way up the knobble is lower most Okay, so there we are. That's the uh, that's the air filter in the right place. We can now get the cover back on. Now, worth uh, mentioning here. Let's get rid of the dead bee, shall we? Come on, fella, out you go. Right. Um, worth mentioning here is there's a little lip here with a rubber. There's a little rubber gasket in there, and that lip has to be over the top of this this section of the uh, the housing here. If it's not, and it's sitting to one side, A, you'll struggle to make it fit, and B, you'll really struggle to get the bolts in. So, um, and obviously, you won't be, uh, it, it, won't be it won't be airtight. So you, uh, it'll be sucking in all sorts of stuff from uh, outside, uh, and it'll, 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 it'll be bogging inside your airbox. So let's make sure um, that the, uh, that, that rubber gasket sits where it's supposed to. Let's pop the cover back in position. 
Now, it's a bit of a pain to get in. But she's in, right. There. Just make sure, as I said before, we get it in the right place. And there we go, that is that. And we can now get these bolts tightened down. All five of them. And the filler cap can go back on there. All right, let's get them two at the back done because they're the pain. All right, what I'll do, I'll tighten all five of these bolts down and then we'll come back in and we'll have a look at the, uh, the uh, oil filler. Right then, that is the airbox all assembled. Uh, it's reverse of uh, reverse of removal, dead straightforward. It was just a case of making sure that all the lips go where they're supposed to go and then that all the bolts are tightened up. So, air filter done. Next, we're gonna do the oil filter. Oil filter lives in here. Um, what I need to do is crack the top off. It's a 32 millimeter socket. If you've got a six sided one, all the better. You're less likely to, uh, less likely to damage it because it's only made of plastic. And it's just a case of Cracking it off, oh. all right, and then winding her out until she comes out. Now, what I've got here, I've got some uh, some blue tissue just to catch any spills because this is particularly messy. And then, hopefully, I'll limit the amount of uh, oil that I've spilled everywhere. As you can see. It's particularly dirty. Okay, let's catch it as best we can and then stick her on there. Now, I don't know if you heard that dripping then. There was quite a big drip from the sump plug underneath. That's because I released it. It'd be like a vacuum. Um, and obviously removing this cap has allowed the rest of the oil to sink out. So that's what that splosh was underneath just now. And it's allowed everything to come out of the air filter housing, or the oil filter housing, should I say. Uh, yeah, you can you can hear underneath running now there's more oil coming out so that's uh that's good right what we'll do um i'll get the brand new oil filter out of its package okay so here we are there's a new filter we've got an o-ring for the for the cap just there there's an o-ring it's hard quite hard to see because it's gone a bit flat but that's an O-ring just in there. And then um, a new washer for the sump plug. We'll do that obviously when we uh, go back underneath and refit the plug. So what I need to do is um, pull this apart, swap the uh, filters over, swap the O-rings over, and then we can get it back in. Right then, so we've got brand new filter, got our little O-ring and, uh, and the washer there. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna remove the filter from the, uh, from the cover and um, it simply pulls off just like so. Now, what I like to do, a little trick I like to do, is take my rubber glove and then pop it over the filter just like so. And the same with this one. It just helps to contain some of the mess so it's not going everywhere. And then we can pop that to one side. Put that down there. Right, let me get some more gloves on and then we'll uh, we'll crack on and get the new one on. Right then, back onto the cap. Now what we need to do is we need to remove this oil seal. Right here, come on, off you come. Just whip around just like so. Put that to one side. Now we need a brand new seal. And what I'll do is pop it over the top, whip it all the way around, just make sure it's not twisted. As you can see, this has actually got a profile to it. It's not flat like the old one was where it's been sat before. So what we need to do next is just give the uh, give the o-ring a little light coating of oil it will just help it seat better when it comes to when it comes to going on to the car bit of clean oil all the way around 
And what that does is it prevents it grabbing because if it grabs, it can it can dislodge it from its from its uh, you know it can pinch it or whatever, and it it can affect the seal. So what we do is just lube it. It just makes it so that it goes in nicely and it will stay where it wants to be. Okay, right. Let's just clean the hands up. Next, the filter. Simply pop <laughs> pop it through like so, and there we go. Simple as that, ready to go back on the car. Now, let's fit it to the oil filter housing. Okay then, so, brand new filter, brand new seal. Simply a case of putting it back into the car. Obviously that engages in the hole at the bottom of the oil filter housing. And then, simply screw her down. Now, let's get, her, get her in by hand first, because the, the, the cap is only made of plastic and you don't want to cross-thread it, it's easy to do. And get it up so that the, so the, the seal is seated. You'll, uh, you'll struggle to get it done any more than that. And then wind it down slowly until it's up to touch like so. And then what we need to do, switch to a torque wrench set to 25 Newton meters and torque like so. That is it. It really is as simple as that. Don't over torque it because it is only plastic and you will damage the threads on the plastic cap. Now, what I can do, remove the plastic, make sure I clear the penny mess that I made. Just there we go. Right then, that is the oil filter done. What I need to do next, get up underneath the car, get the sump plug fitted and get it filled up with oil. Okay, so here we are back underneath the car. Get the uh, get the sump plug bolt back in. Brand new copper washer on there, as you can see, just there. Brand spanking new one came with the uh, oil filter, as I said before. Get it up to touch. Right, we can move the drain pan out of the way because we don't need that there anymore. Get our torque wrench and just like the oil filter housing this one is also 25 newton meters again don't over tighten this it's a steel bolt in an aluminium sump that is all it needs right i'm going to give that a little wipe down um, and then we'll get back up up top and um, get some oil in the car Okay then, so now that the sun plugs uh, fitted back to the car, we can get some oil in, in, in into the engine. What I'm going to use is the uh, this 5W30 um, fully synthetic oil, which I got from Halfords. The reason I, I I've never actually used this oil before. The only reason I bought it was because I got it absolutely dirt cheap on a trade deal. Um, so I'm gonna I'm gonna use some of this. Uh, it takes approximately six and a half liters um, to uh, to fill it up. Um, so I'm going to start by using the five litre bottle first um, and get that because it will take all of this. I'll get five litres in and then um, we'll check the levels and then we'll, we'll top it up, top it up until we've, uh, we've got it where we want it to be. OK, then let me uh, let me siphon this into my uh, engine oil jug and we'll start the filler up. And there we go. Cap on. It's actually marginally over five litres and more like five and a quarter in there, so I feel like I've got a feel like I got a good deal. Okay then, so let me just pop that back over here. Don't need that anymore. Right. Pop the cap off. And as I said, it should take all of these five litres quite easily. Well, I'll, do, I'll get this five litres in, then I'm going to go underneath, check the sump plug, just to make sure that there's no leaks. There shouldn't be because we talked it to spec, but that's not to say that there isn't, so it's worth checking. I 
I find this jug much easier to get oil into the engine than as funnel. As you can see, I haven't spilled a drop over the engine, so. Right. That's five litres in. What I'm going to do, go underneath, check for, uh, check for any leaks, and then uh, I'll put this other two litres into the jug and um, we'll check the levels once it's uh, all drained down into the sump. Okay, I've given it a little bit of time to uh, drain back down to the sump and I've checked the dipstick and it's just, just touching the end of the dipstick now with five litres in. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to stick another litre or so in and then give it a chance to drain back down and then check it again. Give that 30 seconds to drain down the sump and then we'll uh, we'll check the level on the dipstick right then so it's had a uh, little over six liters in there and i've given it a chance to drain down to the sump so let's pull the dipstick out give it a wipe and dip her again okay let's see where we are moving that into the sunlight okay as you can see it's about halfway between the minimum and the max so i'm happy with that for the moment what I'm going to, that's um, obviously with the car up in the air, so all the oil is at the back of the sump. So it'll probably, it will most likely need a, uh, a top up, but I'll do that once the, uh, once the car's level on, on, uh, on the ground on all four of its wheels. Um, so yeah, happy with that for the moment. Right, what I need to do next is um, the fuel filter. And then once we've done the fuel filter, we'll do a coolant change. Um, so yeah, let's get back underneath the car and start looking at the fuel filter. Okay then, so the fuel filter lives on the chassis rail just down here. So what we need to do is take some paneling off. Um, we'll start with this one. Um, I can't remember whether it's on this side of the chassis rail or that side. It's been a while since I've had it off, but I'll take this panel off first and see where, uh, where we are. Um, it's eight mil bolts, there's a few of them and a couple of uh, Phillips headed screws at the front. So what I'll do, I'll whip this panel off and then I'll bring you back uh, once I've got it off. Okay, so the first panel's off, and here is the chassis rail, and the, sh the fuel filter is around about here on the other side of it. So yeah, this panel here has got to come off as well, and it's quite a long one. It goes about two-thirds of the way down the car, so there's a load of 8mm bolts that have got to come out. And um, yeah, we'll get it off, and then uh, and then we can uh, we'll have access to the filter. So again, like before, I'll get this panel off. It's just it's just 8mm bolts all the way around. Uh, just take pop them all. There's quite a few. There's probably about twelve to thirteen of them. I think there's a couple of those um, ten mil, uh, ten mil little black plastic ones that BMW like to use as well. There's a couple of them. Um, there's one there just behind the Webasto exhaust. Um, and then uh, we'll get this panel off, and I'll bring it back once we're uh, once we've got access to the fuel filler. Okay. So once all the uh, little eight mil screws and these little ten mil nuts, th these are little plastic ones. I've all been uh, taken off. The panel will just drop down like that. It's ha actually hinged at the back, but it doesn't need to be completely removed. So don't worry about that too much. It can just stay as it is like this. Okay, here is the fuel filter. Now, um, all we need to do to switch this out is undo the Jubilee clip here, pull this, pull this clip here. It's like a, it's like a spring. Uh, like a spring clip and it all it does is it retains this section to the back of the filter and then undo the clamp um, This little rubber piece here inside will have to be taken off of this filter and then fitted onto the new one um, But other than that, it's pretty straightforward. So um, I will bring the drain pan over However, and put that underneath because we will lose um, uh, All the diesel that's currently in the filter um, So yeah, let's uh, let's crack on and uh, get it switched out Okay, right then, working with very limited room under here. I've got me, got me drain pan underneath, ready to catch all the diesel that's going to spill out of it as I pull it off. Right, let's undo the Jubilee clip at the front. Get that out of the 
the way. Okay, there we go. Right, what I'll do next, undo the clamp, 10 mil bolt. The beauty of all of this, oops, the beauty of all of this being behind the covers on these on the E65 is that it's uh, you know really really well protected from the elements. So that nothing's rusty under here, it's all it's all quite nice. Cramp for space. Okay, well, there we go. Okay. Put that to one side. And then slide all that off because we're going to need that for the new one. And then, lastly, what we need to do is just release this clip. Simple, just like. Just like so, and there we are. Put that to one side. Now, all we've got to do is pop this end off, and we will lose diesel. There we go. Just let the diesel drain into the. Let the diesel drain into the into the drip tray and then what I'll do just twist it off this end I'll bring it over here because we'll probably lose a bit more out of the pipe and there we go Let that all that drain out before we move it away. Right then, next thing we want to do, get the new one and prepare it to fit. Simple case of popping the little red tang off, throwing that to one side, fitting it over into the hose, and then this end pops back in like so with the clip pushed back on come on on you go Right then, I'll pop her back over. What I'll do now is I'm going to tighten the Jubilee clip up first. And then I can get my drain pan out of the way. Tight. All right, let's get that drain pan out of the way with all the diesel in it so we don't spill it. All right then, now all we need to do is put the bolt back through the clamp and then bolt it back up to the chassis. nip it. It doesn't need to be overly tight, just enough to stop it bashing around. Oops. Not a lot of space to work under it. Uh, 
and there we go that is the fuel filter replaced now what it's uh, worth noting is when we come to start the car it may take a good 30 seconds or so for it to start or it might start and then die um, because uh, it depends what's on the, f uh, the front side of the mechanical fuel pump the high pressure fuel pump um, it'll probably just use all that fuel and then it'll die so what we, what will it will either take ages to start or it'll start and die and then take ages to start again so either way just be aware that the fuel filter has to fill with fuel um, before it'll run again so don't panic when the uh, when the car doesn't start it will eventually right then what I'll do get all the panels put back on and then we'll uh, we'll get back up the top and we'll um, have a look next at changing the coolant Okay then, so moving on to the coolant. Now, this is the back of the radiator and just there you can see the coolant drain plug which has that like red plastic, that red plastic uh, drain there. Well, that's what we're gonna need to undo in order to drain the radiator out. And that will drain all of the, all of the coolant out of the header tank and out of the radiator and all the associated pipe work. What we do need to do, however, in order to get, um, uh, the, the to, to collect the coolant basically into our drain pan is we need to go underneath the car and remove the under tray at the front of the car um, and then that will allow the, the coolant to fall into our drain pan otherwise all that will happen is it'll hit the under tray and it'll just go all over the garage floor and we don't want that so um, I'll show you underneath the car this is the one we need to remove just um, a few 8 mil screws holding it on and then once that's out of the way we'll be able to see the drain plug just up under here and then we can get our drain pan under here just like this and then we can open up uh, open up the drain and let the coolant flow out so what i'll do i will whip it off and then bring you back in um, when we look at actually undoing the drain okay now we've got this under tray off we can uh, we can see the uh, the drain plug from the underside it's right here and as you can see, there's a little, a little uh, nozzle. I'm trying to think of the better word for it, but we'll call it a nozzle for the purpose of this. Now, a little tip: what we're going to do, I'm going, I have a piece of hose with a jubilee clip on the end. I am going to put it on that nozzle. I am going to tighten that jubilee clip up as tight as I can get it, and then. That will help us get the coolant into the drain pan instead of um, just letting it hope, hope that it lands in the drain pan. So what I'll do, I'll tighten this on and then we'll come back and we'll look at actually undoing the drain. Okay, we've got a hose on. Now what we need is a large flathead screwdriver into the recess on the bung and simply turn it's not overly tight just screw it out and there we are coolant coming out the pipe just keep going allowing it to drain all the way out and then we'll come back to it once it's all out one thing that will speed up the process is to take the cap off the um, expansion tank that allows air in which will allow the coolant out as you can i don't know if you can hear it on the video but the the uh the uh, sound of the water splashing it in the, into the uh, catch can in, into the uh, drain pan has just uh, has just sped up so what i'll do i'll give it a couple of minutes and uh wait for all the coolant to drain out right then that is all the coolant drained out. It took a little while because um, it doesn't flow out of there massively, uh, you know, at a massive speed. So it took uh, a good 20 minutes for it all to uh, to come to a stop. Um, you won't get all of it out because obviously there's some in the, in the heater matrix and all that sort of stuff. But, um, you know, leave it for a while and get as much as you can out. Okay, I've put the um, I've put the the, uh, the stopper back in. I even changed a couple of little O-ring seals that are on it because I had spares. So I've changed those and put it back in and signed it up. Right, now what we're going to do is we're going to fill the coolant. Um, what I've got here is 50-50 um, mix. This is an ethyl glycol antifreeze mixed with 50% 50, uh, 50 um, distilled water. So 50% coolant, 50% distilled water. Um, use distilled water, not tap water, um, because the distilled water doesn't promote furring of the coolant passages in the engine. 
Right then, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to add the coolant. Oops, spill a little bit. Just add the coolant to the to the expansion tank, pouring it all over the engine. Keep going. It'll take a fair bit. Then we'll get air bubbles popping up. And again, top it up again. And there's the air coming out. A bit more. probably take all of this bottle I would imagine some more air popping up these engines these particular engines are actually really really easy to bleed um, as opposed to the six pot petrols where the expansion where the expansion tank is mounted on the side of the radiator these these are really really easy they, they bleed themselves without you even trying you can hear all the air coming out and just keep going right once 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 it's full what i'm going to do is i'm going to go and start the engine i'm going to start the engine now get it up to temperature and then once the thermostat's open, the level will drop. I will then stop the engine, allow it to cool down and then check the level in the, in the uh, expansion bottle and then top it up to the marker, which is inside the max min marker, which you can see just inside the cap. I will make sure it's at the max. And then that is the job done. It really is that easy. Okay. Um, that is pretty much the car serviced. Uh, what all, all I'm going to do is put the under tray back on from when I drain the coolant and put the cover back on the engine. Um, other than that, we're, uh, we're all done. Okay, hopefully, uh, hopefully you found this video uh, entertaining, useful, whatever. Um, please feel free to give me a like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. And I'll catch you all again for the next video. Thank you very much. Bye-bye now.